I want to get your perspective, first of all, on Dangote Cement's numbers released yesterday. Um, a lot of people are, are saying that they were, they, felt they were slightly below expectations. What's the Stambik IBTC view on those numbers? Um, well, they were in line with our expectations. We expected Q3 to be weaker mm. um, because of, uh, you know, two of, of uh, DCP's significant plants being in flood-affected areas, right. uh, as well as ongoing, you know, concerns with, with gas supply and the impact that that has on margins. Um, you know, if we consider that uh, both uh, Obajana and Agboko were in Category A areas as far as the flood is concerned, yeah. um, then, you know, this had an impact on, on dispatching c cement uh, from the plant and uh, as well as the heavy rainfall having an overall negative impact on construction activity. Mm. So um, this, this was in line with our expectations. Uh, and, you know, if we look at the sort of full year, we still see that the revenues and the PBT uh, and PAT uh, estimates that we have being broadly in line with, um, with, with what management is expecting. I think that overall they're perhaps a little bit more upbeat on, on how uh, gas supply is going to play out in Q4. Right. Um, we are more cautious on that. Uh, but, you know, overall we are uh, about in line with regard to expectations. We still have a buy on the stock mm. um, a, a, an upside of about 22% from current levels. Well, of course, this week we did see um, First Bank release numbers. So, in a sense, rounding up for us, the, the big numbers out of the banking sector, all the top tier banks have released now. And let's just take a step back and take a look at those numbers. I think, broadly speaking, Q3 was uh, slightly weaker, I think in line with what we've seen in the cement sector. But your thoughts on what we've seen so far and what it means going into next year? Uh, well, I don't think that the banking results were because of the rains, but um, yes, they were, <laughs> they were weaker in Q3. Um, I mean, largely, we, you know, we saw, uh, um, you know, the, the, the cost of funding. We, we kind of expected that, that Q3 will be softer for, for most because of the, some of the policy decisions that were made, you know, at the start of the quarter and, and the fact that it would have taken banks some time to adjust their balance sheets uh, to that and the impact that, that would have had on um, on, on you know, cost of funding and, and, and margins to some extent, as well as the fact that uh, in, in a sort of a, a tight liquidity environment uh, where interest rates, you know, to, to uh, are still relatively high, loan growth prospects are somewhat constrained. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the, the, if we look at the nine-month uh, return on equity for, for, for the, the banks under our coverage, um, you know, they're all have moderated from where they were at the start of the year. Uh, right. the, but the, the tier one names are still, um, you know, north of 20%, essentially, about 20% or above. I mean, GT is leading the pack uh, significantly Clearly. ahead at 32.5. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this is kind of what we expect from GT. And, and I think that their efficiency advantage um, it really comes into play there. Um, right. But with, with the second tier banks, you know, they're more sort of low double digits, uh, you know, early, early sort of teens uh, levels, um, with the exception, of course, of Diamond Bank, who, you know, obviously is benefiting from normalizing in provisions. And, uh, you know, even though they still have a relatively high cost of risk, still the highest in our universe, um, because of where they're coming from and the uplift that, that, that you know, their strategy is kind of uh, allowing to flow through to the bottom line, they are still uh, the star performer um, right. with regard to with regard to return on equity and cost of funds in the tier two space. Right. And let's look uh, forward a little bit and begin to maybe project what we could see in terms of making the case for banks again. In, if it we're making a dividend play for the banks going into next year, of course, the next set of results we would see will be the full year numbers, and of course, banks yeah. are expected to um, pay out dividends. What kind of yields can we anticipate in that space? Um, well, again, the, the the yields have moderated, obviously, given you know the price performance that we've seen uh, in the sector year to date. Right. Uh, but the second tier banks are still, you know, e edging ahead. Um, and you know, it's the banks really that have had the weaker price performance, like Sky Bank. Yeah. Um, you know, based on our full year 2012 estimates, we put their dividend yield uh, expectations at around about 13 mm. percent. Um, and there are, you know, the, the sort of second tier, the, the, the FCMBs and, and so on are around that kind of 10, 11 percent level, right. whereas the tier one banks have kind of dropped down to um, to to sort of a, a high single digits level, given given the price performance we've seen year to date. I mean, I, I do think that for for some of these names, you know, Skybank uh, has had a reasonable track record in terms of delivering profits when its peer group has has failed to do so. Um, and we, we think that you know it's something to consider for Skybank. Uh, whilst we have some concerns about you know their medium term outlook with regard to how they sustain a low cost of funding and some of their strategic uh, sort of effectiveness, yeah. um, I, I do think that from a dividend yield point of view, the stock has something to offer uh, investors at this time. All right. Of course, we know that the likes of GT Bank, some already saying um, fully priced 
So the top tier names not looking as attractive as the tier two names. Do you agree with that sentiment, or where, where would you be putting? Where will you be recommending people allocate more to tier one or tier two? No, we would still be weighted towards tier one. I mean, the reality is that uh, you know there's much less forecast risk for for the tier one names, particularly names like GT and you know and, and even First and Zenith. It, it, forecast risk is much less right. than we've seen at tier two banks. And you know, to be quite honest with you, a nine percent or eight percent dividend yield um, is, is still an attractive yield. So mm. we would still weight towards tier one, but you know. I wouldn't write off tier two uh, completely, particularly for the names where the price action year to date has been relatively weak. Well, I think one place we can agree is that even tier one, tier two, there's definitely still value in the banking sector. Thank you so much, Relay, for joining us. Always great chatting with you, Relay Adeshino from Stambik IBTC.